Hey, would you look at that? I guess I'm the Titanic conspiracy theory debunker now. Have you ever heard of the Titanic Olympic switch theory? If not, that's a good thing. The basics of the theory is this. White Star ordered two ships from Harlan and Wolf, Olympic, and her sister ship, the Titanic. Soon into Olympic's life, it encountered an accident which damaged the ship beyond repair. Harlan and Wolf, along with White Star, then patched up the ship as best as they could. They hauled it back to Belfast, and then they swapped the identities of both ships so that Olympic became Titanic, and Titanic became the Olympic. Then, the now damaged Olympic, which everyone thought was Titanic, went on her maiden voyage and the company underinsured the ship. They planned on an accident on the maiden voyage, which would sink the ship and allow them to get rid of it since it couldn't be repaired. There's been dozens, possibly even hundreds of online articles and documentaries that disprove how this happened and why it's not possible. From the nameplates being cut into the hull, to the logistics of the insurance, so on and so on. But for now, I want to focus on two things that make this theory completely impossible. The first is time. You see, when Olympic had her accident with the Hawk, and she needed repairs, she was quickly patched up with wood and towed back from England to her home of Belfast, Ireland. The total time she spent in Belfast was 44 days. Later on in life, she also threw a propeller blade and had to return to Belfast one more time for a new propeller. That took a grand total of 8 days. But if you're a believer in the switch theory, the ships would have already been switched by then, so we can ignore this 8 days and just focus on those 44 days that Olympic was in for repairs for October and November of 1911. So here's a photograph taken shortly after Olympic arrived in Belfast for repairs from the Hawk collision. Notice that the very, very incomplete ship in the foreground is the Titanic. The ship looks all nice and pretty that's back there, that's the Olympic. Since Titanic is obviously an incomplete ship at this point, two major things need to happen for the switch to have taken place. You need to take everything allotted for Titanic and put that into Olympic, and then take everything currently inside Olympic and hastily put that into the Titanic. Keep in mind, this doesn't just mean simple little things like china, mattresses, cutlery, and carpeting, and so on. It means every single piece of the interior. You see, ships have a yard number. And when you can refer to that now as a serial number, it was etched onto every piece of the ship's interior. 400 for Olympic, 401 for Titanic. This number is found on everything inside the ships. It's on the back of each piece of wood paneling, every piece of machinery, everything. So to be absolutely sure that no one could ever tell the switch happened, you couldn't leave anything to chance. The interior for each ship would need to be swapped out, in a grand total of 44 days. It's also worth pointing out that when Olympic was launched, and her shell, which was basically empty, and towed to the dry dock to be fitted out for her interiors for the first time, on October 20th, 1910. It took the Harlan and Wolf workers until May 31st, 1911, to complete her interiors. That is a time span of 223 days, or 7 months and 11 days. It's quite simply impossible, just looking at it from a time perspective, that the switch could ever have happened. If it takes them 7.5 months to finish the Olympic as a new ship, there's simply no way that they can take all of her interiors and machinery out, put that inside the Titanic, then take all of Titanic stuff and hastily put that inside the Olympic in only 44 days. So the last thing that I want to discuss is the most severe changes that were happening to Titanic which differentiated her from Olympic. This would have further increased the amount of time that it would have taken for the switch to have taken place. Those are 
the B deck and A deck alterations. Because keep in mind, the ships while they were being constructed in the gantry were basically identical. Soon into Titanic spitting out, however, it was decided that they were going to change the B deck and it was going to get an entirely new layout, and the A deck promenade was also going to be altered. Some of this work was already underway when the Olympic was towed in for her Hawk collision repairs. So here's a B deck layout plan of Olympic just to show you how much it differed from the Titanic. Starting from the rear and making our way forward, here are the changes that were allotted for Olympic. On the starboard side, a new feature exclusive to the Titanic was added, the Café Parisienne. On the port side, the extremely popular a la carte restaurant had been extended. These two changes removed the aft section of the enclosed promenade space on B-Deck. The restaurant's galley and the pantry was also extended on the port side. Then on both port and starboard sides of B-Deck, the promenade deck was removed and there were new luxurious first class staterooms included. Two of these staterooms featured multi-rooms and a private 60 foot long enclosed promenade space. Then because of all of these staterooms, ventilation changes were needed electrical wiring changes were needed, and finally on the forecastle, the skylight for the crew galley was changed and a cowl ventilator was added. All of these changes were being made to the Titanic when Olympic was being serviced for her accident, which means, and follow my logic here, if they wanted to switch these ships, this is how it would have had to happen. 1. Undo all the changes to Titanic and revert her A-deck B-deck and other interior changes back to the Olympic style. Then set aside all of those lovely new first class stateroom interiors in a warehouse because they will be installed on the Olympic slash Titanic after the Titanic slash Olympic had sunk. Then you need to fabricate entirely new interiors that were supposed to go in and represent Olympic, all of them with a fake serial number to install them into the Titanic. Now you have to gut the Olympic, dispose of all of the machinery and interiors because of the serial numbers, fabricate entirely new fake Titanic interiors with a fake serial number and install that into Olympic. Keep in mind that these fake interiors would have to include the massive changes to B-Deck and A-Deck, then send the now Titanic disguised as Olympic out into service and finish the work on the Olympic disguised as the Titanic and send it out in 1912 to be intentionally sunk. All of that swapping and fabrication of interiors would have to happen in 44 days. 44 days. Keep in mind again that it took them 7 months and 11 days just to finish the Olympics interiors the first time. For the switch to work, you're asking the workers at Harlan and Wolf to basically take a shell of a ship, the Titanic, and fill it out with brand new interiors to mimic the Olympic and send it out for successful voyages and then bring it back in after a planned 1912 accident so that they can undo all of the Olympic changes and refit everything back over to the initially planned Titanic layout. All of that in 44 days. You can look at this theory in any number of ways and it falls apart. But by looking at it this way, it becomes quite simply impossible. <laughs>